back. Deion Evans Live, Truth Raw and Uncut. Phenomenal segment there. Got that good uh, update in with uh, James Moss. And, um, you know, I would now I would tell you, I'd be, I'd be less than right if I didn't do what I asked you to do. And so I'll be very transparent. I made sure that I gave $50. Uh, to the James Moss uh, Defense Fund, JM Defense uh, Fund uh, dot com. I went ahead and took the time to uh, be a blessing because I believe in it. Uh, JM Defense Fund dot com. Send that out. I know for those of you who can give a dollar, give a dollar. If I can get 50 of my friends to give a dollar because I gave $50, match me. Somebody match me. Give a tithe of what I gave. Give $5. I gave $50. You know, I'm starting to sound like a Church of God in Christ preacher. Let's get a hundred dollar line. Let's get you know. I gave fifty dollars, and I'm telling you, not because I want you to clap. Don't clap that up. There's nothing to clap up. I just wanted to make sure that you knew, as listeners, and those to whom you'll tell. I don't want you to ever ask people to do something that you yourself will not do. I didn't bring James on because uh, there's been a backdoor deal and. You know, we have a we have millions of people who listen to our broadcast. And we do know that listener support does not exist because we're listener supported ourselves. And you know how it is when you're asking for yourself, people don't give. And that's why I knew it was best for us to do our best to try to at least ask for him. And so I wanted to do my part to ask. I wanted to do my part to give. Now, sir, ma'am, I ask you to come alongside me, partner with me to, you know, let's make a difference. Is that all right? I hope that's all right with you. If you have it, give it. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. But if you have it, please do not operate as if you don't. This man's life is hanging in the balance, and we ought to be doing something about it. All right? Before we get our next guest, because I have another update for you, I'm going to have Pastor Seiko Woods on with me. Before I bring Pastor Seiko Woods, I want to take this caller. We got Dual Victory on the line out of Oakland. Dual, welcome to Deion Evans Live, Truth Raw and Uncut. How are you doing? Hey, I'm well, brother. I'm just disheartened. I I can't believe it, but I can't believe it. We live in America. Um, I just want to say I I match your 50, and uh, I'll be sending it in as soon as I get home. Wonderful. Well, I appreciate that. You can either do it through going through the website, jmdefensefund.com, or you can uh, mail it in, James Moss Defense Fund, P.O. Box uh, 20001, Montgomery, Alabama, 36120. Dual, I want to thank you for standing with this case. I want to thank you for standing for justice. Let's just do our part. Absolutely. Let's just do our part. We need to bring... An international, national attention to the CNN, Roland Martin, everybody. I'm a, I'm a blasted off on Facebook. Wonderful, and I gotta, I gotta really appreciate uh, Stacey L. Bracy of the Bracy Group. And that's B-R-A-C-E-Y. She has been chronicling on Twitter. So if you're on Twitter, you're not following me, you can follow me at 4RMG, the number 4, the letters RMG, like Righteous Mercy Grace, or you can go to the hashtag James Moss, James Moss. And so uh, you can go there and you can catch up with all that Stacey L. Bracy put out there. But I want you to also follow Stacey Bracy. Dual victory. Thank you for the call. Thank you, brother. Love thank you. you. Thank you for the match. I appreciate you standing in the gap and matching. Thank you for that. Praise God for you. And uh, and may the Lord bless you real good for doing something, putting some money uh, where your mouth is and putting feet on your prayers. Praise God for that. That's good looking out. Good looking out. All right, let's do this. Uh, we have another update that we want to talk about on Dion Evans Live. Uh, and this is a very important update to me because I did, I, I, I did this uh, broadcast. A video had surfaced um, uh, probably a little over a month ago uh, from a colleague of mine and a fellow brother in the Lord. And, um, and I've had conversations with him on on and off record, uh, public and private, as far as social engineering and cell phones is concerned. And uh, and I've talked to him about it. And he gave me information regarding his videotape, uh, and he gave me evidence and names regarding, you know, the contents of his videotape. And as a investigative journalist, I investigate the investigation. And I'll be honest with you, because I respect this brother so high, uh, I believed everything that he said. Uh, to a certain extent, 
and until I went investigated the investigation. And at the time that I did my first interview, uh, five of the people who were spoken of in the videotape against Pastor Seiko Woods, four, th- uh, two of them had already spoken to me personally and told me that not only did they not stand by the videotape, but that they were highly angered that their names were used in that videotape and that their their place of business was actually filmed. And then post the show, I had been received uh, calls from others. So basically, of the five people that I was given information on, now four have contacted and have said that the information in the videotape does not properly represent their um, does not properly represent their thoughts on Pastor Seiko Woods. So being the responsible man that I have, I had no no choice. I'm forced to bring Pastor Seiko Woods because when we brought him on, we talked about this videotape. And at the point that we talked about this videotape, we did not know, um, you know, the truth from fiction to the videotape. Was this a personal vendetta? We don't know. But he was willing to come on and have the conversation. And he had the conversation. And he admitted a lot of things regarding um, regarding the videotape. I want to uh, also give a shout out to Shirley Tarkington, who has matched my $50. Praise God, man. Praise God for those of you who are matching the $50 to support James Moss. Man, I'm so, you know, I, I just ask. And I've always, you know, I praise God that I can ask for others and others can be blessed. I just I just thank God for that. And, 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 I, and, I, and I mean that from my heart for those of you in Christ who are, who are helping this brother, James Moss, get some lawyer that will be able to properly and adequately deal with him. I think if we did this, uh, it, it's a better use of our tithes and our offerings to do it and use it in Christ's work. Oh, I'm doing a show on that real soon on tithes and offering. Believe me. Let me get to it. Let's get brother Pastor Seiko Woods to the national stage. Pastor Seiko Woods, how are you doing, man? Man, I'm doing good, brother. I'm doing good. Hey, man, listen, before we even get started, man, let me just say this. Uh, my wife and I, we've already talked about it. I heard the show uh, this past two segments that you did uh, with the brother, and we will definitely match uh, your 50 with another 50. So consider it done, brother. We're not just saying it just, just to say it. You know, we're going to put our opinions together, and I'm going to encourage the, uh, the people in our church uh, to uh, to be prayerful and also consider giving you know at least a dollar. We can we can buy combos and and, and two piece dinners and all that kind of stuff, bro. I'm pretty sure we can we can make it happen on our end. So uh, we'll be supporting this brother as, as, uh, to the best of our ability. But you can count me and my wife in on that deal. By all means, Pastor Seiko Woods. And again, I you know if you tell me, I know about it. But I other than that, I won't know about it. For those of you who are telling me about it. Praise God. Praise God that you're telling me because I can be able to let other people know to just to generate the movement. Pastor Seiko Woods, you're with me. It's first segment, man. I want to talk about take down the video. I have, in all honesty, talking to our dear brother, uh, and, and I refuse. Let me, let me say this. For those of you who may be listening who are also uh, close colleagues with our dear brother, uh, Kevin Oliver, I don't have a dog in the fight. I love Kevin Oliver. I love Pastor Seiko Woods. Uh, I believe to the best of my discerning abilities of what I know about them individually regarding their knowledge of the essentials of the Christian faith, they're saved by the blood of Jesus. Are there areas, secondary, third class issues, doctrinal issues that we may disagree on? Absolutely. But you do not ever fall out over secondary or third third tier uh, issues in doctrine. But the essentials, the person of Christ, the person, the nature of God. Those are the areas where we dig our heels in the sand. I have Pastor Seiko Woods talking to our brother, uh, Kevin Oliver, and I have asked him, I've asked him point blank, you know, hey, man, why won't you just take the video down? Considering that you put this video out there, you videotaped in front of this pastor's house, uh, you use the thought that because your address was on the website, he kind of, kind of, you know, said that that was public, and so he did it publicly. You know, I've done a lot of things as an investigative journalist. I don't think I would have put somebody's personal home, even if that is their church, I don't think I would have made that decision. But I'm not going to censor a journalist, Uh, although I'm not sure that Kevin Oliver is a journalist. I do know that he is a YouTube blogger. I do know that, and there's a huge difference between blogging and journaling. Very huge difference, and the rules are very different. But I did ask him, and his position was, based upon, you know, the people who are now coming out saying that they don't stand by this video, uh, that they never, they've never met Kevin Oliver. They don't know Kevin Oliver. They didn't speak to Kevin Oliver. 
and yet Kevin won't take the video down. His attitude was, well, if the people don't stand by it and people don't believe it, then it's, it's non-consequential. It's not necessary. To which I argued with him, well, brother, if it's, if it's not, if, if, if your argument is falling apart and you're saying you're doing this record, why won't you take it down when so many people to whom you're citing as your source are now saying we do not stand by this video? And what's more concerning for me, they don't even know Kevin Oliver. They don't know Kevin Oliver. They don't know him by his pen name. And they all say we never talked to him. That kind of concerns me. Having said that, you wanted to come back on Deion Evans Live. We wanted to make that happen because I believe in balance and I believe in it being fair. I did, for those of you who are listening, I did invite Kevin to be on this show. It's up to him if he would like to be a guest on the show. And I've also encouraged Kevin that even after listening to this show, if he would like same equal time to talk about the contents, we can do that too. And so those things are out there. Again, I don't have a dog in the fight. All I care about is clarity and truth. And when you're in the public, you don't get to be private when you want to. All right. So Pastor Seiko Woods, the taking down of the video. What has this video cost you? What 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 has been the fallout of this video regarding your life as a man, as a father, as a pastor, as a husband? Talk to us, man. Uh, on all on all all fronts, it has cost me, you know, some discomfort. It's cost me uh, people to question whether or not uh, some of the comments were true uh, or statements were true by this video by people that I consider to be uh, very, you know, very close friends, uh, people that I that I've been knowing for like five, six years plus, give or take, you know. And, uh, you know, so I had to do a lot of uh, damage control, if you will, not for the purpose of trying to hide anything, but for the purpose of trying to, you know, uh, protect my reputation for the sake of the gospel. If this video was more so of, a, of an issue of him just, you know, uh, bringing up my past uh, from a personal level, uh, I wouldn't really trip on it. But, but as, a, as a pastor and as a minister of the gospel, uh, I have people that I'm responsible to, and I have people that I must give an account to, when I stand before the Lord. So it, it costs a lot of discomfort. Uh, it costs a lot of uh, uh, mental and spiritual harm uh, uh, to my family, to my church. I mean, I had to do a lot of work, man, for the past few weeks uh, in our church uh, just to make sure that, that we don't respond in the flesh. I mean, you know, if, if someone is attacking your child or someone is attacking someone that you love and that you care for, you know, y- you know that the, 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 the tension of them not wanting to do anything stupid versus them trying to walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh is going to be hard. So, you know, I, I thank God for, for you know, my family, my wife and kids, man, uh, my, my church family, other brothers and sisters that are even outside of, of, of our local fellowship that have stood with us. Um, but it, it, was, it was a battle, man. But one of the blessings, I believe, was it, it, it helped me um, as a pastor to teach, uh, you know, my congregation that this is this is a war. This is a this is a battle. Satan is not playing. Uh, he's he's not called the accuser of the brethren uh, for no reason. And Satan has people on his payroll that are willing to do his will uh, when you are dangerous in the kingdom. And so uh, God uses this as an opportunity for me to teach, to educate, for to encourage, uh, to to warn, to admonish the body of Christ, you know, locally and just universally. That uh, you know, number one, none of this stuff is true. And then number two, this happens when you are doing the work of the kingdom. So. Um, you know, long story short, man, it just basically, for me, uh, I have no, no ill will toward, uh, Mr. Oliver at all. Uh, I, I do, I do, uh, demand that he takes the video down because of the lies and because the, 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 the accusations have not been proven. Let me share this. One of the contents of the video, and I, and I only bring this up, all the things that I will bring up are things that I know absolutely have been, uh, found not to be true in the video. In the video, Kevin uh, talks about that. And and for those of you who are saying, well, Dion, put the video up. I won't. I refuse to put the video up uh, for two reasons. One, because the contents of the video are not accurate. And number two, the comments to the video have been taken down. I don't know how all of that has happened and transpired. Maybe uh, Pastor Seiko Woods can give me more insight on that. Because pretty much I've stayed away from the video since I did the last show and I had already contacted sources that are quoted in the video and found out that they're not true. One of the sources that I had not gotten confirmed until post our last interview was the whole idea that there was a church that had an um, 
a church that had said that you were no longer welcome back at their church. And I did talk, talk to the leader of that church to find out that that was absolutely not true. And the pastor was quite disturbed. And I, again, I'm not using his name because he does no longer want to be a part of this saga. And he asked me if he if I could help to clear his name. And so that's what I'm doing. Uh, so if you know the video and there's a pastor that's spoken about that says that you are no longer welcome on the church grounds, that pastor has called me personally and has sent me word personally that that is not true. But also in that video, there was some content in there about somebody else, another church, having a uh, restraining order filed against you. And in the video, it was told that you could go, and that's of a public record, and you can go get a copy of it. Is there a restraining order against you? Have you, from the contents of the video, talked to the people or persons who are supposedly have a restraining order on you? What has been the fallout over all of that? Yes, I have uh, spoken with the uh, the church in question, and uh, no, I do not have a restraining order. It's like the last show uh, that you would graciously allow me to uh, to be a part of. There's no restraining order against me. And as far as uh, you know, Kevin saying that this is public record, all you got to do is ask. That's a lie. That's a straight up lie. Um, you know, this is again another ad hominem attack because this has nothing to do uh, with you know with the Bible or with the with the gospel. This is this is more personal. So. Um, I spoke with the uh, with the pastor, uh, uh, one of the pastors there, and uh, and and his his sentiment was the same as the other pastor that that you spoke with personally. That you know that he even put on the on the YouTube uh, link uh, that Kevin had uh, produced that he does not want uh, their name to be added to the situation. This is this does not represent them. This is not something that they uh, that they you know conduct themselves as. And so uh, mysteriously, and I use that as a tongue-in-cheek, uh, Kevin has taken all the comments down, more, more so because people were uh, basically, you know, uh, responding to him and, 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 and rebuking him in and, and love and challenging him to, to make the situation right. And so not only did he take their comments down, but he blocked me from making any kind of uh, comment, any kind of, 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 of statement uh, regarding the allegations and okay. accusations. And okay, so, so so wait a minute. Again, I have Pastor Seiko Woods on the line. We're doing an update to a show that we did uh, a couple of weeks back. Wanted to bring him back on because uh, I like the show that we did then, but there have been some new developments, and it's only right to help make sure that we clear up with the same audience and the same platform that we did it on. Now, you just told me that one of the uh, church's leaders – that was cited in the video that they put a comment on the actual YouTube uh, video rebuking the video. Absolutely, absolutely, and I, and I know for a fact that was the uh, uh, actual church that did it because their 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 username is one of the names of their ministries that they use. So, and plus, I spoke with the pastor personally, and uh, he even made it clear to me uh, that that was the case. And also, other people have have, have called this church. Just to verify, I mean, people that know me personally, but at the same time, they wanted to, you know, they wanted to test all things, and I have no problem with that. Be a Berean. Check it out. But they even called the church and found out that the uh, accusations and, and comments that Kevin made about me, about this church in that video, were a lie, and it was false. And they approached him as well. So it is, it's been more than just the church that has been contacting this dude. There's been a lot of people been, you know, touching bases with this guy and wanting to uh, make sure that he makes it right. But yet and still, the video is still up. Right now, it's over, it's over 1,600. Uh, hits, you know, uh, but nonetheless, I, I wouldn't care if it was only one. When you lie on a person, when you when you maliciously and intentionally slander somebody, uh, I don't care who may have seen it or not seen it. It is your obligation biblically as a professing Christian to make that right. And, and that's why I had to bring you back on because, you know, I can't s stay yay or nay. I knew at the time I did the show about, you know, uh, about 30%, 20% of the video could not be, well, not that it could not be corroborated. It was found to be uh, misleading or untrue. And then since then, I have found out we're now, you know, closer to 75% that I know absolutely of the video is not true from the sources that are actually being spoken of in the video. Now, to Kevin's defense, I must say that he said, uh, I think in our last broadcast, if memory serves me well, that he was very careful not to say that they said, but that people to whom he would not name told him these things. And so he kind of, you know, he he protected people who didn't want to be uh, cited, but at the same time used names of people who he didn't speak to. And those people are now 
whose names were used are now coming out saying we didn't talk to this man and he's not quoting us properly and the contents are not right. You're saying a particular church in, in, who was uh, brought into this video has gone on the YouTube and said, basically rebuked the video. And now you can't even make comments on the video. No, you can't make any comments on the video. He's blocked. Um, you know, anyone now for making comments. At is first, it, it was just me. Hold now, on real quick. Is it anybody. that you can't Is it that you can't make comments, but comments that are already there are there, or were the comments that were even there, were they completely removed? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I, I, everything you just said, the comments that were there have been completely removed, and you cannot even make any comments now on the video. He, he has basically shut down the comment thread on, on the video, but the video is still up and running. So, so what I'm hearing, for those of you who are listening, what's going on here is that there's been enough heat on the video to kill the comment section, but not enough to keep the video, to take the video down. To me, if I have to kill the comment section, means I cannot allow anybody to comment, and at least before I kill the comment section, one of the churches in the video publicly, publicly, not a member of the church who says they go to the church, but the church uses a link connected to their church publicly, denounces the video, and then I get rid of the comments. Now nobody can comment. It seems to me that if I have to take the comments down, then for the sake of reconciliation and the sake of forgiveness or the need of forgiveness, I I think you have to take the video down, too. And that's why I named this segment Take the Video Down. And, and, and again, I, I, you know, maybe Kevin was thinking of doing the right thing. I personally feel, this is me personally, I personally feel that, that Kevin has allowed himself, and I, and I love him as a brother. I, I do not, outside of this video and maybe one other incident, I've only had two disagreements with Kevin. You know, that I know of. But outside of all of that, I think if you circumvent Matthew 18, you run the risk of putting yourself in a position where you've been pushed up a tree and then somebody lights that tree on fire from the bottom. And so, uh, Pastor Woods, what was it like uh, when you had to go to worship service that Sunday after the video had come out? What were your people like? Have you lost congregants? Uh, have people just said, I, I, it's too much. I, I can't come. I can't be around that kind of drama. What's been going on in the church since then? Has attendance dropped off? What's been going on? No, actually, attendance has not dropped off. Actually, we have a sister that drives way across town uh, that has been friends of ours for, for years and has supported us even now with her presence. Uh, so, no, attendance has not, has not dropped off. Um, what I did, actually, to make sure that people knew what was going on, I played the video during our worship service. Uh, we, we have corporate prayer, and so what I did was during our prayer time, I played the video, and I played it in its entirety. I played it with my children sitting there as well uh, because I believe that my children needed to see this and, and know, uh, you know basically some things that would, what, what goes on because I want my children also to know what to pray for and even how to pray. And so when they saw the video, you know, there, there, it was, there was some anger. Um, there was tears uh, being shed, and I said, now take all of that and let's take it to the cross. That's, mm-hmm. what, that's what we did. We prayed, uh, prayed for God to vindicate, and we prayed for God to move on uh, Kevin's heart, and we prayed also for those who, who slandered uh, me, also slandered our church, my family, uh, uh, you know, the, the congregants here. So, you know, we have not lost members, brother. If anything, it, it's, made our, it's made our membership stronger and our fellowship and, and, and communion uh, with each other and with the Lord, most importantly, stronger. Wonderful. Well, let's do this quick. We got a caller from New York. We got Lewis. Let's bring Lewis onto the line. Lewis, welcome to Dion Evans Live. Truth, raw, and uncut. Dig in. Hey, God bless you, my brother. What's up, Seiko? Hey, what up, bro? All right. Um, I just, uh, I know Seiko for a couple of years, and, and the one thing that bothers me about what Kevin did is the lack of, of, of repentance. Um, if he if he is a believer or he calls himself a believer, you don't see it. You know what I'm saying? Because for you to just outright just slander and call, and you call yourself a journalist too, it's a sloppy job. And and then it's a little it's a little punkish take down comments, especially you know what I'm saying uh, after you get exposed. Mm-hmm. You know it's 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 bad. 
very bad, uh, you know, as, as since he calls himself a believer. So let me let me ask you this question, Lewis. I mean, I what I, I want to be I don't want to do commentary on top of people's comments because people have a right to their comments. H- how do you see what would have to happen in your opinion, Lewis of New York, for us to get some type of reconciliation going on in this process? Well, um the one thing is that Kevin would have to repent. Repent, take down the video and and admit that it was it was a, a smear campaign. You know, um, uh, like I said, I've known, I known Seiko for a few years, and everything that he mentioned on the video was basically a lie. When he did, um, after he did the video, he had his, he, his show that Saturday, I called in, and I and I mentioned something about when he said about uh, when Seiko was in Gyra that, that he left, and I, I told him, well, this is the reason he left. He didn't want to hear it. He hung up on me. You know, so you know what you did. So wait a minute, you, know, you, call, you called into a radio show of Kevin, and you uh-huh. tried to explain to him some more information that will help give him a better context. And yeah. when you gave information, or were seeking to give information, you were hung up on. He said, he said, uh, we're not going to allow uh, Seiko's uh, people to to control the show, and. Uh, he didn't want to go tit for tat. And and what I had, the reason that Seiko left Gyra was very important for people to find out. Kevin, Kevin knew. It's just that you can't give half a story. Let's do you this real quick. Lewis, I want you to hold the line. We got to take a hard okay. break. We're going to come back on the other side more with Pastor Seiko Woods and the caller out of New York, Brother Lewis. We'll be back. 